You know, people often hope for fame and success to fall into their lap. But for me, it was the other way around. About a week ago at a restaurant in Harvard Square, the lap I almost fell into, that of Dr. Craig Mello, a Nobel Prize winner, and better yet, a local Nobel Prize winner, who along with his partner Andrew Fire, got the 2006 Medicine Award for the discovery of something called interfering RNA. It's very closely related to messenger RNA, or mRNA, I think, anyway, which we've heard so much about over the past couple of years, thanks, obviously, to the Moderna and Pfizer COVID vaccines. So never one to miss an opportunity. I no sooner arose from a near face plant on his table than I asked if he'd be willing to join me to tell us how RNA science could change our collective lives next. And he very kindly agreed. Dr. Craig Mello is professor of molecular medicine at UMass Medical School in Worcester, where he runs the Mello Lab. It's great to have you here. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jim. It's great to be here. How scared were you when I was hurtling <laughs> towards your table? Honest to God, all 247 pounds. I, I would have pounds caught of, you. I, I promise. I don't think you could, but thank you for the kind. So uh, I was a, it's true, C minus student in biology, probably my worst thing. My understanding is you discovered a way to block the effects of individual genes in cells. Do I have that right so far? Yes. So uh, translate it into English for me. What does that mean? So what we discovered is that cells, every cell in our body, has a little search engine, a programmable search engine. It's like a little Google mm -hmm. inside of the cell that is programmed by naturally by short queries made out of genetic information, in this case, RNA. Mm -hmm. And those RNAs guide this search engine protein to targets inside the cell, and then they can regulate them or silence them, in most cases, silence. Um, so this enables, what, what's so, what was so exciting about it is not only that it exists, but that when we discovered it, we discovered that we could program this search mechanism artificially. So we could actually give the cell an RNA that the cell would then use as a query to find information, enabling researchers to make artificial queries in the laboratory and then give them to a cell in order to get the cell to carry out a guided search uh, using that information to find and silence the target gene. To potentially what end? You silence that gene, what, <coughs> to what end? So uh, when we discovered this, as you may remember, this uh, early 2000s, the human genome was finally coming mm -hmm. together. And so we had, all of a sudden, we had all of this genetic information about not only why people get sick, but why some people are healthier than normal. So we had already a great deal of information about human genetics, and that information has been just growing astronomically as we can now sequence people's genomes so much more cheaply. Um, so are there therapies that yet, and what has it been, uh, 16 years, are there therapies that have come out of your work? Yes. There, for what kind of thing? There are now approved therapies for a variety of different liver disorders. Some of them are very, very, you know, bad, life-threatening, uh, in fact, uh, lethal um, genetic inborn type diseases where, again, the causative gene was identified based on the Geno Genome Project and human genetics. These individuals who yes. are getting sick, I de we, I, these genes were identified, and then the opportunity to make these drugs came along right, right about the same time. And these drugs can then take, go, be given to a patient. And liver, kill the bad guys, And they turn off the gene that's driving the disease. So I read an interview with you somewhere not too long ago where you said that you were really targeting, your hope at least was, that certain diseases like Alzheimer's, ALS, the, non, the no cure for diseases might be within the scope of this technology. Are you, are you still feeling that way? Yes, indeed. Uh, we we are very excited about going after uh, disorders of the central nervous system, and the problem has been that you know we're trying to give the cell a search query to enter into this natural mechanism, but of course we're coming at it from the outside. We're making a molecule. We have to give it to mm -hmm. your cells and get them into your body. That's why the liver was an easier target because it filters all the blood. If you, give a, if you give it any drug to a patient, it all goes, a lot of it goes to the liver. But getting into the brain required a lot more work. But nevertheless, 
we can now deliver these molecules very well into the brain. How do you feel that I almost understand this? I actually, oh my, <laughs> no, I really do. You know, uh, you won your Nobel Prize, you and your colleague, at least from what I remember, this is from a long time ago, I remember some of the commenter, uh, commenters were saying, you won it at a time much closer to your actual work than most scientists do. What, what did that mean? Because they thought the value of this thing was so huge? I mean, it's hard to ask the guy who did it, but is that, is that not the reason? Well, it, it, it was, in fact, um, a really exciting discovery from the standpoint, as I just told you, that, that it was a natural, programmable mechanism that would allow us to, if, it, if we could think of or make drugs, it would enable us to make drugs that modulate gene expression, enabling drugs to go directly to the underlying causes of disease. Understood. So it, when I, I was too nervous to look at you when I was saying a couple of minutes ago, it's similar, I'm too nervous to look at you now, similar to the mRNA stuff that none of us ever heard of and then were you know, exultant about because of the vaccines. Was that a correct statement? Was I'm it not? sorry, uh, you're, getting, it you're continuing to get a C minus Oh, that was biology. bad? No. So is there any relationship between yes, the two? Yes, of course, they're both made out of RNA. Um, that's the connection, it's RNA. Mm -hmm. RNA is like DNA, it's a, it's a chain of nucleotides. And I always try to give people a little primer on these things when I try to explain what I work on. It's really not that complicated. There's just four letters in the genetic code, right? And they're strung together in these polymers in our genetic code, in the DNA. And RNA is a version of that polymer code. And these short pieces of code can be used, you know, you don't need much. Like to find Macbeth, you just need to remember to be or not to be, right? You don't need the whole play or even, you know, you can, uh, who wrote it, you can just find it. And Thanks for not embarrassing me when I was reading that. Can we step back for a second? You know, I had uh, Anthony Fauci on the radio with me about a month ago, and uh, I asked him if he was worried about the anti-science, I don't know, movement, mindset growing in this country. Here's what Dr. Fauci had to say. We are living right now into what I think is a growing anti-science attitude. We've seen that uh, growing over the past few years, and it's reaching a point now with COVID where some very obvious scientific truths based on clear-cut, very visible data are rejected by people. I mean, the, the anti-science... Uh, atmosphere that many of us have experienced is very troubling. Do you share his concern? I mean, I assume it could affect funding, how many kids decide they want to become you. Do you worry about it like Dr. Fauci does? Uh, absolutely. It's, it's very worrisome um, for many reasons. I mean, if the attitude persists, other countries are going to eat our lunch, you know? I mean, How do we disabuse people of this <laughs> when we seem to be such a fact-averse society right now? How do we do this? Well, you know, when you're, when you're trying to bring along everyone, of course, there's the challenge. Mm -hmm. We actually do have a really, really healthy scientific enterprise in this country. Um, I'm not so concerned that science won't keep plowing ahead despite the headwinds. You know, and most people in government, it seems, you know, at least value uh, the outcomes mm -hmm. that science brings uh, to the table. Um, Let's hope it stays that way. But, but yeah, it's a real concern. Um, to me, to see how people are, you know, spreading information, uh, misinformation, and and not ha able to evaluate information. Is everybody nice to you now that you won a Nobel Prize? Who wasn't nice to you before? Is that <laughs> is that true? It's, it must be. It's right? it's been wonderful, of course. You know, I love being able to talk to the lay audience and to get on a Thank show you. like this and <laughs> be able to, to to explain RNA to people. I mean, I, I just find this stuff so incredible. What I love about science is the more you discover, the more you, you, you explore, the more mysterious everything gets, right? It's well, just, it's like those images from the I knew you were gonna say new that. telescope. Absolutely Well, I hope stunning. I fall in your lap again soon. It's great to see you. Be well. Likewise, Jim. Thanks Thank so you. much. Craig Mello.